Dragon Tales, Dragon Tales, it's almost time for Dragon Tales. Come along and take my hand, let's all go to Dragon Land. <laughs> Anyway, can you guess what we're covering today? <laughs> so yeah, dragons. Again, you're gonna notice a pattern with my videos, especially when it comes to some of these um, nature-y entities and or spirits and how their temperament and frequency are. But today we'll be discussing dragons and like the entities or spirits I spoke about before them they come in a wide range of types and variations on the scale. Personally, I have experience with both the negative ones and the positive ones. I have, I have quite a few experiences actually. Um, I even have a tattoo of a dragon on my arm. So if y'all want to see that, probably not, but I'm gonna show you anyway, but yeah, dragon. Come along and take my hand. Let's all go to Dragon Land. Okay, so I love dragons. They are freaking cool. They are lit. You can learn so much from them. But um, just about every single culture around the world has dragons somewhere embedded in there. And, you know from dinosaur looking ones with the wings to the wingless giant serpent ones. They have been described as spirits with a wide range of functions, such as providing wisdom, power, strength, often embodying forces of nature, representing the balance between creation and destruction. Dragons can also act as guardians and spirit guides, depending on the type of dragon will depend on their roles. So, okay. So there's a bunch of different types of dragons. You have nature ones that embody nature. You have ones that embody the weather, which kind of falls into nature. You have ones that are thought forms. You have ones that are deities. Like there are all different kinds, all different shapes, sizes, designs. You get the long Chinese dragons. You got the Game of Thrones looking dragons. Um, there are so many different kinds of dragons. And all of them are very beautiful. Even some of the negative ones, they're still beautiful. Um, but one thing my spirit guides did tell me is that in ancient cultures, you know, some of them found remains of dinosaurs. <laughs> And this is where like the thought form part comes in here to play. So it's like some of the remains of dinosaurs had been discovered and along with the remains of some like other large game animals, larger mammals, larger um, reptiles, right? So that's how you're gonna get the different variations of dragons, especially when it comes to thought forms. But pretty much they're like, oh my God, there's all these bones. Oh my God, it's a dragon. And yeah, <laughs> that's just one way anyway. But my guides were like, hey, by the way. And I was like, really? Cause it's, it sounds so like duh kind of way. I don't know. But um, yeah, the idea of dragons have existed for a long time. But in addition, there are types of dragons that existed as elementals and that can be considered a deva. Devas come in many shapes, sizes, and forms. Also, like if you think about it, devas exist with all living things, living things like um, organisms. So even like plants and things, you'll have devas as I've discussed in previous videos. But think about it like this too. You have devas of dinosaurs. It's like you don't even think about that kind of stuff because it's like, 
they've been gone for millions of years. You'll have spirits of organisms that existed millions of years ago. Remember, time is not linear. Time is happening everywhere all at once. So again, how I describe, I've seen dinosaurs in state force and stuff. Like when I walk, it'll be like the ground remembers it. And because I'm clairsentient, it's like I'll pick up that information through my feet and stuff. And I'll be able to see it. And it's like, those have um, the equivalent on the metaphysical. So it's like, I don't know. It's just crazy. It's crazy to me. But instead of giving you guys like a full background of dragons, because we'll be here for friggin' years, honestly, because every culture has their own like interpretation of what a dragon is and what they do. I feel like most people kind of already have a general idea of what dragons are. I don't need to explain it and like the culture significance to it. But if you're interested in that, you can always Google it. I thought, you know, we would just talk about like some of my experiences and uh, cause you know, the information about dragons, you can literally find anywhere. Whereas my experiences, you're only gonna find them from me cause they're my experiences. But anyway, oh dude, while I was doing this video, while I was making my notes, I, you know, I was just skimming through the internet looking at like the different kinds of dragons and things, right? And I came across one from uh, India. Now, if you don't know about my past life, I made a video about it like a year or two ago, probably two years ago now. And I had a past life in India, right? And I have a lot of um, Hindu spirit guides and like, so Shiva's one of them. Um, I've met Lakshmi, I've met Ganesha. So I thought this was interesting, but they have a primordial deity that transforms into a dragon called, and I'm gonna say this wrong, so I'm sorry, no disrespect to y'all who worship this specific deity, but Pobi Lai Pafal, sorry again if I say that wrong, with its actual name being Pakhangba. The reason I'm mentioning this uh, deity is because my tattoo looks just like him. And okay, sometimes I'll go on Pinterest and be like, hey, tattoo ideas. So I did and that's how I got my tattoo idea like in the style and whatnot. However, the original image didn't look like that. Actually, the head is different. In the head, I had redesigned and the head looks exactly, exactly like this, uh, you know, Indian deity. So I was just like, hmm, is it coincidence or is it part of my past life bleeding into this current life? I'm going to say I'm not much for coincidences. Obviously they do exist, but when it comes to me and this kind of like stuff, mm, it ain't a coincidence. So I was just like, oh shit, this is freaking lit. But, um, yeah, if you want to know who that is, you can uh, search them. It's Pakhangba, and it's the primordial deity dragon in India. But, um, anyway, I didn't even know India had dragons in their culture at all. I know they had a lot of, like, um, they also have Deva and a lot of deities but like I didn't ever think about dragons because when I think of like Shiva I don't think of dragons I think of like um, cows I think of like monkeys I think of like snakes things that would be in the culture or within India the country itself like animals that would exist in that climate okay so we're gonna be talking about my experiences specifically so the first experience is when i lived at my parents house this was like three three years ago three and a half years ago i don't know around three years ago and 
I astral projected. And the way that the realm I was in was, it was pretty much like it looked, ev everything else looked the same as, you know, our current 3D realm. And if you don't know anything about the astral realm, it's pretty much a mirror of the current realm we're in right now. But this was like that, except it had darker undertones. So think of the upside down and stranger things, kind of like that. And so it had darker, you know, undertones to it. And, you know, I was kind of just like scouring around, like kind of like looking around what's going on kind of thing. And I met the dragon and this dragon looked like um, a Game of Thrones dragon, you know, kind of like with the dinosaur body and the wings. And I'm just like, oh, shit, it's a dragon. Like, I don't like when I first started in this journey, I didn't know what was real, what wasn't real. And so I was doing a lot of like reconnaissance and learning about different entities and yeah I came across that dragon and I was like holy crap I want to learn about you you're so beautiful you're so cool and he let me ride on his back and he took me places around my neighborhood and it was so cool I mean I'm afraid of heights and it scared me because I was high in the sky but like he reassured me and for being in a like it wasn't a negative realm, but it was just lower in vibration than what this earth realm is and what the astral realm is like. The part of the astral realm that I'm typically in, this one was slightly darker. And it was just so cool. He was taking me around on his back. You know, we were noticing some things, some sightseeing. It was great. Um, 10 out of 10, definitely. <laughs> But after that, you know, everything was kind of back to normal. And then the next experience I had, I did a past life reading for one of my patrons and I discovered he had a past life as a red dragon. I'm pretty sure it was a red dragon. But this dragon was more of the serpent-y one, had the long body, you know, and it had the little, little legs and it was really pretty. He was really cool. But I learned that in this, this current life now, because he, he had a past life as a dragon and he is familiar with the dragon realms because dragons, a lot of dragons live in their own realm. So he was one of those kinds of dragons that had his own realm. And in his current life, he has a black dragon that's like that kind, like the serpent-y long body kind that is his spirit guide. And I just thought that was so freaking cool. And yeah, he's teaching him all sorts of lessons and things. Um, yeah, so you can have dragons as spirit guides. You can be, you could have been a dragon in your past life. You, yeah, there's just so many things. And now the last experience that I had was, now if you listen to the Lights at Midnight podcast, which I am a part of with my friend Chastity, aka Luminary Luna Beams, who is also another psychic medium. Um, we were talking about my birthday this year and I had to work and, you know, I was feeling really yucky. Like my, I think it was my stomach that really hurt. And yeah, I just felt awful. And, you know, I had been texting her throughout the day as like in between customers and things. And I'm like, yo, I feel like crap. And so she tapped in and as she astral projected to me, um, she was like, yo, you have like this black nasty dragon behind you. And like as a quick, I don't know, it's kind of like an immediate, immediate instinct reaction kind of thing. She was like, whoosh, opened up a portal and yeeted that thing in there. So... I remember seeing this dragon. It was very, um, it was very serpenty like. It wasn't super big though. I didn't see it as massive, but it was like a black shadowy dragon and it was just full of negative energy. And that's just an example of a negative dragon because you could have negative dragons and things. And so it was very shadowy and black. It had, I think it had glowing, I forget yellow or red eyes I don't remember and I just remember her being like yo there's a shadowy dragon behind you and then she 
opens up a portal and yeets it in there and is like, bye, and sends it on its way. And then she um, filled me up with light energy to help kick out the negative energy that that dragon gave me. And I know that dragon came from the work environment that I was in because there's a lot of negative stuff at work at that place. Um, there's so many earthbound spirits there. There's so many um, thought forms there. So many na- there's a there there's a demonic entity there. I'm so glad that I'm on leave without pay because well I'm sick as fuck. But like um, having to be in that work environment where everyone is full of negative energy and are nasty and it just perpetuates the problem and um, keeping those negative entities around it's a bad environment to be in when you're clairsentient and empathic and just a medium in general but so I'm glad I'm not there but um so yeah that was the third experience with the dragon when I was trying to channel them today I keep being put to sleep and the first time I remember getting like images and flashes of the um, Hindu, I don't know if it's considered Hindu religion, but within the Indian culture, um, I was getting flashes of that dragon. And so I know that deity is, is legit and he exists because I was seeing him. He was very beautiful and very like calm. Um, yeah. And trying to, I wish I had remembered the rest of that experience but I just remember his face was so big and it was right next to mine and I remember like looking at him like this and I'm just like oh shit that's that's the dude that looks like my tattoo but yeah so I thought I would share that experience but if you guys have any experiences with dragons I'm very curious to know your stories please leave those stories down below I want to know I want to read them I love reading everybody's comments I mean, I'll answer as many people as I can. There's so many of you and I'm so grateful for everyone who has supported me and all the new subscribers. I'm so happy that you guys are here. And yeah, but anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are awesome and uh, peace out. If you like to learn about different kinds of entities, I highly recommend watching the Poltergeist video I did, a reaction on Melinda the Mystic Witch. From that video, you will learn a lot about poltergeists.